everyone, it's Angela with Broadhead Memorial Public Library back with another episode of Have You Heard? We are still reading Flora and Ulysses by Kate DiCamillo with pictures by KG Campbell. Just want to give a quick thank you to Candlewick Press for letting us share this book with you this summer. All right, last week when we left off, uh, Flora and her dad had just left the donut shop and were heading to his apartment and Flora met uh, one of her dad's neighbors, Dr. Meacham. So let's find out what happens next. Chapter 37, Singing with the Angels. He woke up with a single giant watery eye staring at him. He blinked. His head hurt. The, gi the gigantic eye was mesmerizing and beautiful. It was like staring at a small planet, a whole sad and lonely world. Ulysses found it hard to look away. He stared at the eye and the eye stared back. Was he dead? Had he been hit over the head with a shovel? He could hear someone singing. He knew he should be afraid, but he didn't feel afraid. So much had happened to him in the last 24 hours that somewhere along the way he had stopped worrying. Everything had become interesting as opposed to worrisome. If he was dead, well, that was interesting too. My eyesight is not what it was, said a voice. When I was a girl in Blundermeachin, I could read the sign before anyone else even saw the sign. Not that it helped me, seeing things clearly. Sometimes it is safer not to see. In Blundermeachin, the words on the sign were often not the truth. And I ask you, what good does it do you to read the words of a lie? But that is a different story. I will tell you that story later. I find this magnifying glass to be of great assistance. Yes, yes, I see him. He is very much alive. I know he's alive, said another voice. I can tell that. Flora. Flora was here with him. How comforting. Hmm, yes, I see. He's a squirrel. For the love of Pete, said Flora, I know he's a squirrel. He's missing much fur, said the voice. What kind of doctor are you, said Flora. The voices in the room kept singing. They were full of sadness and love and desperation. The voice belonging to the giant, he, giant eye hummed along with them. Ulysses tried to get to his feet. A gentle hand pushed him back. I'm the Dr. Meacham, who is the doctor of philosophy, said the voice. My husband, the other Dr. Meacham, was the medical doctor, but he has passed away. This is a euphorism, of course. I mean to say that he is dead. He has departed from this world. He is elsewhere, singing with the angels. Ha, there's another euphorism, singing with the angels. I ask you, why is it so hard to stay away from the euphorism? Eutherisms. They always creep in, always, and attempt to make the difficult things more pleasing. So, let me try again. He is dead, the other Dr. Meacham, the medical one, and I hope that he is somewhere singing, perhaps singing something from Mozart. But who knows where he is and what he's doing? For the love of Pete, said Flora again, I need a medical doctor. Ulysses might have a concussion. Shh, shh. Calm, calm. Why are you so agitated? There's no need to worry. You are worried about what? I will tell, you will tell me what happened that makes you think it's a concussion. He hit a door, said Flora, with his head. Hmm, yes. This could give a concussion. When I was a girl in Blundermeachin, people were often getting concussions. Gifts from the trolls, you understand. Gifts from the trolls, said Flora. What are you talking about? Look at him. Does he look like he has a concussion? The gigantic eye of Dr. Meacham came closer, much closer. It studied him. The beautiful voices sang. Dr. Meacham hummed. Ulysses felt strangely peaceful. If he spent the rest of his life being stared at by a giant eye and hummed over, things could be worse. The pupils of his little eyes are not dilated, said Dr. Meacham. Dilated pupils, said Flora. I couldn't remember that one. So, this is good. This is a hopeful sign. Next we will see if he remembers what happened. We'll check for amnesia. 
Flora's face came into view. He was glad to see her in her round head. Ulysses, she said, do you remember what happened? Do you remember being at the giant donut? Did he remember being in Rita's hair? Did he remember Rita screaming? Did he remember the man with the knife? Did he remember flying? Did he remember hitting his head very hard? Did he remember not getting to eat a giant donut? Let's see. Yes, 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 and yes. He nodded. Oh, said Dr. Meacham. He nods his head. He communicates with you. He's, um, different. Special, said Flora. A special kind of squirrel. Excellent. Good. I believe this. Something happened to him. Yes, he hit the door with his head. No, said Flora. Before that, he was vacuumed. You know, sucked up in a vacuum cleaner. There was a small silence, and then there was more humming from Dr. Meacham. Ulysses tried again to get to his feet and was pushed back down gently. You are speaking euphorismus, euphorismically, said Dr. Meacham. I'm not, said Flora. I'm speaking literally. He was vacuumed. It changed him. Certainly it did, said Dr. Meacham. Absolutely it changed him to be vacuumed. She raised her magnifying glass to her eye and leaned in close studying him. She lowered the magnifying glass. How did it change him, please? Ulysses stood on all fours and no one pushed him back. You will speak without euphorisms, said Dr. Meacham. He has powers, said Flora. He's strong and he can fly, she paused. Also, he types. He writes, um, poetry. A typewriter? Poetry? Flight, said Dr. Meacham. She sounded delighted. His name is Ulysses. This, said Dr. Meacham, is an important name. Well, said Flora, it was the name of the vacuum cleaner that almost killed him. Dr. Meacham looked Ulysses in the eye. It was rare for someone to look a squirrel in the eye. Ulysses pulled himself up straighter. He looked back at Dr. Meacham. He met her gaze. You must also list among his powers the ability to understand. This is no small thing to understand, Dr. Meacham said to Flora. And then she turned back to Ulysses. You are feeling maybe a little sick to the stomach? Ulysses shook his head. Good, said Dr. Meacham. She clapped her hands together. I'm thinking that Ulysses is not concussed. There is only this little cut on his head. Other than that, fine, good, great. I'm thinking that maybe the squirrel is hungry. Ulysses nodded. Yes, yes, he was very hungry. He would like eggs sunny side up. He would like a donut with sprinkles. Chapter 38, Unremitting Darkness. You, said Dr. Meacham to Flora, will have a seat on the sofa and listen to Mozart, and I will go and make us some sandwiches. What about my father, said Flora? Shouldn't I tell him where I am? Mr. George Buckman knows where you are, said Dr. Meacham. He knows that you are safe. So good, all is good. You will sit on the horsehair sofa, please. Dr. Meacham went into the kitchen and Flora turned and looked at the couch. It was a huge couch. She dutifully sat down on it and then slowly, very slowly, slid off of it. Wow, she said. She climbed back up on the couch and concentrated on staying put. She sat with her hands on either side of her head and her legs straight out in front of her. She felt like an oversized doll. She also felt very, very tired and a tiny bit confused. Maybe I'm in shock, she thought. Terrible things can happen to you had done an issue listing the symptoms of shock, but Flora couldn't remember what they were. Was one of the symptoms of shock that you couldn't remember the symptoms of shock? She looked over at Ulysses. He was still sitting on the dining room table. He looked confused, too. She waved at him, and he nodded back. And then she noticed that there was a picture hanging on the wall opposite the couch. It was a painting of what looked like nothing but darkness unremitting darkness. Unremitting darkness was a phrase that occurred often in the criminal element, but why would someone paint a picture of unremitting darkness? Flora slid off the couch and walked over to the painting and stared at it more closely. In the middle of all the darkness, there was a tiny boat. It was floating on the Black Sea. Flora put her face right up against the painting. Something was wrapped around the boat, some tentacle shadow. For the love of Pete, the tiny boat on the dark sea was getting eaten by a giant squid. 
Flora's heart protested with a small thud of fear. Holy bagumba, she whispered. From the kitchen there came a sound of clinking silverware and crashing plates. The opera music ended. Ulysses, said Flora. She looked behind her and saw the squirrel sitting on the floor, sniffing his tail. Come here, she said to him. He walked over to her, and she picked him up and put him on her shoulder. Look, she said. He stared at the painting. This boat is getting eaten by a gigantic squid. He nodded. It's a tragedy, said Flora. There are people on that boat. Look, you can see them. They're ant-sized, but they're people. Ulysses squinted. He nodded again. They're all going to die, exclaimed Flora. Every last one of them. As a superhero, you should be outraged. You should want to save them. Incandesto would. Ah, said Dr. Meacham, coming up behind them. You are stuttering, my poor lonely giant squid. Lonely, said Flora. The giant squid is the loneliest of all God's creatures. He can sometimes go for the whole of his life without seeing another of his kind. For some reason, Dr. Meacham's words conjured up the face of William Spiver, white-haired and dark-eyed. Flora's heart squinched up. Go away, William Spiver, she thought. That squid is a villain, said Flora out loud. He needs to be vanquished. He's eating a boat. He's going to eat all the people on the boat. Yes, well, loneliness, loneliness makes us do terrible things, said Dr. Meacham. And that's why the picture is there, to remind me of this. Also, because the other Dr. Meacham painted it when he was young and joyful. Here's a picture. Good grief, thought Flora. What did he paint when he was old and depressed? Now you will sit on the horsehair sofa, please, said Dr. Meacham, and I will bring out the jelly sandwiches. Flora sat down on the couch. Ulysses was still on her shoulder. She put up her hand to touch him. He was warm. He was a small engine of warmness. The giant squid is the loneliest creature in all existence, said Flora out loud. And then, to keep things grounded and in perspective, she muttered, sea blubber. And then she whispered, do not hope, instead, observe. She kept her hand on the squirrel. Chapter 39. The Tears Roll Off Dr. Meacham came out of the kitchen holding a pink plate with small sandwiches on it. She sat down next to Flora. Are you enjoying the horsehair sofa? She said to Flora. I guess, said Flora. She wasn't sure exactly how someone enjoyed a horsehair sofa. You will eat a jelly sandwich, said Dr. Meacham. She extended the plate to Flora. Ulysses leapt off Flora's shoulder and into her lap. He sniffed the plate. Our patient is hungry, said Dr. Meacham. He never had breakfast, said Flora. She took two sandwiches and handed one to Ulysses. This sofa, said Dr. Meacham, is the sofa of my grandmother. She was born on this sofa in Bundermeachen. She lived the whole, her whole life there, and she is buried th there in a dark wood. But that's a different story. What I meant to say is that when I was a girl in Blundermeachen, I sat on this sofa and spoke with my grandmother about inconsequential things, well, well into the gloom of the evening. That is what a girl in Blundermeachen did in those days. She was expected to speak of inconsequential things as the gloom of the evening descended. Also, she must knit. Always the gloom was descending in Blundermeachen. Always, always, one was knitting outfits for the little trolls. What little trolls, said Flora, where is Blundermeachen? Never mind about the trolls for now. I only meant to say that life was very gloomy then, and one was always knitting. It sounds lousy, said Flora. It was exactly this, lousy, said Dr. Meacham. She smiled. Her dentures were very bright, and there was a smear of grape jelly on one of her fake incisors. Flora reached for another sandwich. Had terrible things can happen to you ever warned against eating jelly sandwiches in the house of a wo woman from Blundermeachin? Your father is a lonely man, said Dr. Meacham, also very sad. To leave you, his, bro his heart broke. It did, said Flora. Yes, yes. Mr. George Buckman has sat on this horsehair sofa many times. He has talked of his sadness. He has wept. This sofa has seen the tears of many people. It is a sofa that is good for tears. They roll off it, you see. Her father had sat on this couch and wept as the gloom of the evening descended. Flora suddenly felt like she might cry, too. What's wrong with her? 
Seal blower, she thought, her words steadied. She handed another sandwich to Ulysses. Your father is very capacious of heart, said Dr. Meacham. Do you know what this means? Flora shook her head. It means the heart of George Buckman is large. It is capable of containing much joy and much sorrow. Oh, said Flora. For some reason, she heard William Spiber's voice saying that the universe was a random place. Capacious heart, said Dr. Meacham's voice. Random universe, said William Spivers. Capacious, random, heart, universe. Flora felt dizzy. I'm a cynic, she announced for no particular reason in a too loud voice. Bah, cynics, said Dr. Meacham. Cynics are people who are afraid to believe. She waved her hand in front of her face as if she were brushing away a fly. Do you believe in, um, things? said Flora. Yes, yes, I believe, said Dr. Meacham. She smiled her too bright smile again. Have you heard of Pascal's wager? No, said Flora. Pascal, said Dr. Meacham, had it that since it could not be proven whether God existed, one might as well believe that he did because there was everything to gain by believing and nothing to lose. This is how it is for me. What do I lose if I choose to believe? Nothing. Take this squirrel, for instance. Ulysses, do you believe he can type poetry? Sure, I do believe it. There's, n there's much more beauty in the world if I believe such a thing. Flora and Dr. Misham looked at Ulysses. He was holding half a sandwich in his front paws. There were blobs of grape jelly in his whiskers. Do you know what a superhero is, said Flora? Sure, I know what a superhero is. Ulysses is a superhero said Flora, but he hasn't really done anything heroic yet. Mostly he's just flown around. He lifted a vacuum cleaner over his head. He wrote some poetry. He hasn't saved anyone, though, and that's what superheroes are supposed to do. Save people. Who knows what he'll do, said Dr. Meacham. Who knows whom he will save? So many miracles have not yet happened. Flora watched as one of the jelly blobs on Ulysses' whiskers trembled and fell in a slow motion to the horsehair sofa. All things are possible, said Dr. Meacham. When I was a girl in Blunder Meacham, the mi miraculous happened every day, or every other day, or every third day. Actually, sometimes it did not happen at all, even on the third day. But still, we expected it. You see what I'm saying? Even when it didn't happen, we were expecting it. We knew the, mir the miraculous would come. There was a knock on the door. See, said Dr. Meacham, this will be your father, Mr. George Buckman. Flora stood and went to the door and opened it. It was her father, and he was smiling. Again, still, which did seem kind of miraculous. Hi, Pop, she said. You see, said Dr. Meacham, he smiles. Flora's father's smile got bigger. He took off his hat. He bowed. George Buckman, he said, how do you do? Flora couldn't help it. She smiled, too. She was still smiling when a noise that sounded like the end of the world echoed through the hallway of the Blixen Arms. One minute her father was standing there with his hat in his hands, smiling, and the next minute Mr. Klaus, the cat one, came out of nowhere and landed right on top of George Buckman's unprotected head. All right, so the next chapter is a little bit of a, another comic strip, and it's called Chapter 40, Vanquished. So the cat attacks Mr. George Buckman's head, but who comes to the rescue? Ulysses. So let's see if we can share this with you. So as you can see, the cat is attacking the head, and uh, Ulysses thinks, sunny side up. He jumps on the cat and pulls him off Mr. Buckman's head and then hurls him down the hallway. For the love of Pete, holy bagumba. Oh no, that cat looks concussed. Let's see what happens next. Vanquished, thinks Ulysses. It says, and the superhero was enormously, inordinately pleased with himself. He felt immensely powerful. He felt like writing a poem. All right. Well, I think we'll stop there for the day. 
Um, join us again tomorrow for more of Flora and Ulysses. If you are participating in our summer reading program, you can go ahead and write down 20 minutes for today's reading. All right, everyone have a fantastic day and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye!